I'm going to go get the taillight panel and get it in place. And like I said, uh, we have a jig for back there. I think I mentioned that yesterday. So this is that jig. Uh, Robin made this when the old panel was on there. So it goes up, ties into the trunk lid hinges, and then gives us a place for where that uh, taillight panel needs to go. You know, I started looking online. I found the wheel tubs. I believe they came from Mustangs to Fear. And they have a video on installing their wheel tubs. Pretty basic. Um, I thought we were going to be much more invasive than it really is. Uh, I left about a quarter inch of material, maybe a little more than that, on the frame rail at this back corner. But you kind of start at this back corner and then draw your straight line, which if you had the inner wheel tub and stuff like that in here, where or I guess it'd be the outer wheel tub and stuff like that in here. It'd be a little easier to figure out exactly where this goes. But I was able to get a straight line from here to this inner lip on the front and then measure across and that gave me a place to run a, a tape line and cut it. And then like I said, I, I left about a quarter inch more material than I should need just so I can kind of finish it um, Right now, what I want is I want this wheel tub to go up. It needs to come up at least like three quarters of an inch in here. So I we know we're going to have to trim this piece away to some amount. And I still have a piece of the old wheel tub on here. So I need to take this bracket loose completely till, and then get this piece of scrap off of it. But that will get this out of the way so that the wheel tub can come up to the right height. Uh, and then I'm going to have to go get the the outer wheel tub and just kind of fit it into place before I ever do any tacking or anything. So, well, from a measurement standpoint or from fitting everything where it needs to go, it would be easier if the quarter panel and the outer wheel tub was on. From the standpoint of being have access, much easier like this. But now we have to spend a lot more time trying to measure to get everything in the right spot. What I want to do is I'm going to come in, I'll, I'll leave a little bit of material here, but I've got a line that matches the arc of the wheel tub, and we'll trim some of that away. We'll get this bracket out of the way, and then we need to trim a little bit back here where this is coming vertical, and yet the wheel tub is still kind of on the, the downhill slope. And then I would like to bring the whole thing up, you know, well, at least the three quarters of an inch right here. So I've got a little bit of playing to do. And then I'll put a square on the inside in here to make sure this is plumb with the, uh, you know, plumb to the frame rails and all that. All right, so I fit the outer wheel well, wheel tub, and it fits really well. It's nice. It fits kind of down in a pocket here in the rocker panel. So you kind of stick it in there and then came up and hit this bracket. And I'd already trimmed this other one, which in the end probably didn't need to. I didn't take that much off of it, but probably didn't need to do uh, even the amount I did. Because this inner wheel tub, the mini tub part, is going to fit on the other side of that. Whereas I thought it was going to be up in this arch on there. So, so once, once this is fit, and I've got it clamped and clecoed in place, then I set the the mini tub portion in there and ended up trimming I like I said I'd cut the floor about a quarter inch short of where I thought it was going to go and then I ended up go ahead and cutting that out after putting the little L trim that they give you so like I said they give you this uh, trim uh, trim or weld surface or whatever this goes on the floor and then this lip on the vertical lip gives you something to weld the uh, mini tub portion too so this is the driver's side so and it goes on top of the floor uh, in their video it shows this going on top of the floor and then just grinding back to it and you have a nice flat surface and I used a square on the back side of the tub to make sure it's vertical you know in line and so that it is 90 degrees to the floor and everything is placed and then this tub is a little wider than we can make full use of I mean, we could weld it in just like it is, and it just overlaps. Wouldn't be that big a deal. But there's a an indentation here, a lip, that is in the factory 
housing. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is go ahead and cut the uh, tub so that it drops into that lip and then I can pinch it in there real tight and it'll have more of a factory looking uh, from the underside, which not many people are going to notice it, but once it's in there, we can seam seal it. And then when it gets undercoated or whatever happens, painted, whatever they do, it'll all be nice and finished. Uh, there's about oh, an inch of material here that below the floor in the front, it's a little less. So, but so we could trim this off and make it square. I'm going to leave it on there because it gives a little better finished looking edge than trying to cut it off and then welding that whole seam. The other thing I'm going to do is this piece that's on this passenger side, like I said, it's made to go on top of the floor. I'm going to take it, now that I've got everything pretty well fit, I'm going to take it off and put it in from underneath and weld it to the bottom side of the floor and the frame and where the frame rail and all that stuff is. So that from the top side, there's just a, a nice 90 degree seam. You don't have this extra lip. Again, that can be seam sealed and it completely goes away and looks very stockish uh, or should say factory-ish i don't know so, like i said i need to trim up the mini tub wheel well part uh, so it matches this outer look you know completely then i'll put some clecos or some tech screws or something in there to hold all that together nice and tight with all that done and we can get some of these clamps out of the way that way then we'll go get the quarter panel and we'll test fit the quarter panel to make sure from here to here is exactly correct and then the height we can adjust and this back corner we can adjust with the in the quarter panel but we need this to be dead on before we even tack any of this front part and then we need the height to be good before we tack up in here and then this back part before we tack this so we've got a few places we just want to verify everything fits because if it doesn't fit we'll, you know whether we need to cut the wheel tub and and section it or something. I've had to do all kinds of tricks to reproduction metal over the years. You know, cut them, re-weld them, make them wider, make them narrower. It's just the way of the world when it comes to these reproduction parts. And all of these that are in silver are all Dynacorn, which have typically been pretty much dead on. You know, every now and then I'll get one that's a little weird, but they're usually really good. Let's pull this out, get it scribed, get it back in there and then we'll come back with the quarter panel. Okay, well I threw the quarter panel up on here and it's missing in a few places and kind of made me worry at first and then I got to looking up here and I still have some areas of the original quarter panel that I need to drill out about 30 more spot welds down the window channel and into the Dutchman panel, which is the panel between the rear window and your trunk lid, there's a little piece of the quarter panel on there still. So it's up about an inch and a half, maybe two inches in the back there. So when this, that settles down, I think it's all gonna fit exactly like it should. But my initial response was, oh crud, what have I done wrong? But you know, sometimes you just have to take that step back and go, okay, wait, let's look around a little bit. And sure enough, as soon as I got up on top there, nothing's laying down exactly the way it should and uh, once we go to put this quarter panel on this lip actually needs to go underneath the roof skin and then this piece will drop in and make up the window channel the reason i hadn't cut that piece out before and i just remembered when i was looking at it is there's little uh, tabs sticking out on the inside of the window channel that catch a a clip to hold the chrome in and I needed I didn't really have to do I could have measured it take pictures whatever but one of the things I need to do is mark where those little tabs are at because we can use the stud welder that I use for pulling out dents I have an adapter that lets me weld those little studs on and I can weld those back in place so we want them roughly in the same place that the factory would have had them so that the chrome will hold down well now, one of the things that has been discussed is maybe doing flush glass on the front and back of this car. So before we'll ever weld those in, we'll mark them. But before we weld them in, we'll get with the owner and find out if we're going to go that direction. Uh, because then we don't need them if we're doing the flush glass. So for now, I'm going to pull the quarter panel back off.
And with that out of the way, I need to take this little piece of tab, off, a little piece of metal here off, and the lip right there up to the roof line. Then we'll refit with the uh, quarter panel. For now, I'm not trying to put it underneath there, but once we're pretty sure we've got everything where we want it, yeah, see, and there's another piece of quarter panel right here. So I need to cut that little strip off of there. But uh, once we're pretty sure we've got everything where we want it, then we'll come back and uh, actually shove it in up under there and fit it and make sure the arch fits the arch on the quarter panel exactly correct. Because we can still go forward or back a little bit with it. This point's kind of locked but we can kind of stretch it or shrink it by pulling in and pushing out to make it fit the quarter panel exactly correct. And once that's done, then we'll fit the inner and make it and go ahead and start putting some tack welds and everything. All right, well, I've drilled out all the spot welds along the windshield or the window frame here and Got the, I didn't realize it, but I'd left a piece of sheet metal between the roof skin and the inner structure, part of the old rock or part of the old quarter panel. And so I got all of that stuff cleaned up. That has taken almost two hours. Um, quarter panel's been on and off three or four times. I needed to notch it up here by the roof where in, inside the window well or uh, window channel. I needed enough room for pieces to pass each other. And then up here at this corner, I needed to put a little notch because this angle is not quite right. It's, it's close, but it wasn't quite right, so I had to notch that a little bit. And now it fits pretty well. The exception being it's about 3 sixteenths to a quarter of an inch too far forward as compared to the rocker panel. And I know that is got to be true. A, the rocker panel is original, and B, in the door jam here, I have three sixteenths to a quarter of an inch for this flange to go back against the B pillar. So the whole quarter panel needs to go back that three sixteenths to a quarter inch. Problem with that is this flange is hard up against the B pillar all the way along here and here. So it's it's as it should be here, but the rest of this needs to go back 3 sixteenths of an inch. So what I'm thinking I need to do is come in here, cut the panel right about here, and then cut along, you know, just out here, half inch from that edge, cut it so that that flange is free set the quarter panel and then come back and weld this piece back on and fill the 3 16 quarter inch gap that will be there. Because I think that's going to be the only way to get the fender or the quarter panel in the proper place. Good news is I do have my inner fender in the correct place. There's a little bit of room here. I can pull it forward or pull it backwards rather and I can unspring this side a little bit. So. Generally, it's, it's within probably an eighth of an inch of where it needs to be. But I am going to need to go ahead and get the quarter panel set so that I get this outer wheel tub set, and then I'll set the inner wheel tub, and it'll all line up. So, I think that's probably the most expeditious way. We could try flattening out this piece of metal and rebending the flange and it, it it could be done it's just a whole lot more work than welding back about a what six or eight inches of, of material and I've never had to do it on a Mustang but I've had it on uh, Chevelle's and others where I've had to cut the whole C pillar off get the quarter panel set and then come back and put the C pillar in place I don't know, you know, some of the companies have the original stamps for the fenders and quarter panels, but all that stuff's 50 something years old, so even those even those dies that stamp these things out are are wearing out. Um, others have made their own. Uh, this is a Dynacorn panel. I don't know which 
you know, whether they have their, the original dies or they made their own or what. But we're off by about that 3 16ths of an inch. So, But it's also 4.15 in the afternoon and I'm tired. So I think this is going to wait for another day. But you can kind of get a look at what it's all going to be. See, it's going to end up looking real nice. And... Well, that's it. I'm going to take the rest of the day. And it's Friday night. Go have a beer. Eat a steak. Come back to this another time. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Please spread the word out there on the forums and wherever else that we're working on Dustin's 1970 Mustang. Full repair. We've, done the, we've already done all of the trunk pin. Started working on this quarter and the inner and outer fender well. And obviously once we get this one done, we'll have all the little tricks that we need to know. The other side will go a lot quicker. We'll just be able to knock it out. But again, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, all the other YouTube stuff. I'll see you again next time on Alice Tester's Project Car TV.